<clears throat> when Jesus and his disciples came near Jerusalem, he went to Bethphage on the Mount of Olives and sent two of them on ahead. He told them, go, on, go into the next village, where you will at once find a donkey and her colt. Untie the two donkeys and bring them to me. If anyone asks, why are you doing that? Just say, the Lord needs them right away, and he will let you have the donkeys. So God's promise came true, just as the prophet had said. Announce to the people of Jerusalem, your king is coming to you. He is humble and rides on a donkey. He comes on the colt of a donkey. The disciples left and did what Jesus had told them to do. They brought the donkey and its colt and laid some clothes on their backs. Then Jesus got on. Many people spread clothes in the road, while others put down branches, which they had cut from trees. Some people walked ahead of Jesus, and others followed behind. They were all shouting, Hooray for the Son of David. God bless the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hooray for God in heaven above. When Jesus came to Jerusalem, everyone in the city was excited and asked, Who can this be? The crowd answered, This is Jesus, the prophet from Nazareth in Galilee. writer by the name of Ched Myers refers to the Palm Sunday story as street theater. Um, those of us who go into Boston every once in a while, especially if you're around Faneuil Hall, you see a lot of street theater. There's some very wonderful people out there singing, bands playing, drummers going at it, mu uh, magicians and acrobats and everything else. And it's fun to walk around and stop and watch for a while and then move on to the next piece of entertainment. I had never thought of the Palm Sunday procession like that, but it seems apt to me to think about it as street theater. Um, a lot of organization went into that uh, day. In fact, some of the gospel lesson that Ashley read to us was about organizing the whole thing. And there was a heavy political atmosphere like rallies and other kinds of things that we've seen. That was all going on at the same time. There were lots of feelings of resistance against the Romans especially, and the Jews were unhappy with the fact that God had not given them power and the governmental authority that they thought God wanted them to have. And it was inclusive of many people, like when you're at Faneuil Hall, a lot of us like to just sit on a bench somewhere and watch the people go by. There's nothing funnier than people, let's face it. <laughs> Look around you. <clears throat> And there are various motives and ideas present in this uh, theater that we're watching on Palm Sunday. And there are also passions present. This is really called Passion Sunday in the church calendar. We don't think about too much like that. But it is Passion Sunday. And it's a diverse crowd. And there are lots of passions there. There are faith passions. People are there to see Jesus. And they're hoping that this man is going to make a huge difference in their lives. And there are political passions. There are a lot of political passions, somewhat like the great passions that we are suffering through now in our political scene here in America as we are trying to make decisions for our future as a country. Some of the politicians in those days wanted Jesus to be a warrior king, to crush the oppression, and to bring about a new government more than anything else. And there was an emotional high. You know, the crowd mentality is very different than the mentality of the individuals in that crowd. And sometimes crowds get whipped up, and crowds, in fact, have been known to do things as a crowd that individually they would never think of doing or saying. And there's always the possibility of seeing action. We like to see action, don't we? When a fire truck goes by, don't you? Wouldn't you like to run behind it? Those of you who can still run, <laughs> not, not me. But you'd like to know what was going on. And even though it's probably a tragedy somewhere, we, we like to see the action. And um, it's evidenced by reality TV. Do you watch reality TV? Personally, I think it's disgusting. But I have to admit that when I go by the channels and the cops are arresting some poor soul and some of the most uh, forsaken and I have to say, ignorant people sometimes are portrayed on these shows at their very worst moment. And there's a hesitation there, you know. What's happening? There's a little action going on here. 
Some of you watch those shows all the time, I know, because you get caught up in it. There is a certain amount of excitement, even through some suffering and pain. I started reading a very interesting book. Um, it's a devotional book. It's written by a Buddhist nun, actually. She's a Buddhist nun in Nova Scotia. And she wrote this little book calling, called Practicing Peace in Times of War. And in that book, she tells this story, very unusual story, very odd story. She says, Jarvis Masters is a prisoner on death row. And he has written one of my favorite spiritual books called Finding Freedom. In a chapter called Angry Faces, Jarvis has his TV on in his cell, but he doesn't have the sound on because he's using the light of the TV in order to read. And every once in a while, he looks up from the screen, and then he yells to people down the cell block who have their TVs on and their sound and asks, what's happening now? The first time someone yells back, it's the Ku Klux Klan, Jarvis, and they're all yelling and complaining about how the blacks and the Jews are responsible for all the world's problems. About half an hour later, he yells again, hey, what's happening now? And a voice calls back, that's the Greenpeace folks. They're demonstrating about the fact that the rivers are being polluted and the trees are being cut down and the animals are being hurt and our earth is being destroyed. And sometime later, he calls out again, now what's going on? And someone says, oh, Jarvis, that's the U.S. Senate. And that guy who's up there now talking, he's blaming the other guys on the other side of the aisle, the other political party, for all the financial difficulty our country is in. Jarvis starts laughing. And he calls down, I've learned something here tonight. Sometimes they're wearing Klan outfits. Sometimes they're wearing Greenpeace outfits. Sometimes they're wearing suits and ties. But they all have the same angry faces. That's a better picture of what was happening in Jerusalem that day when Jesus rode into town. There was cheering, there was passion of the people, and there was a great deal of danger and chaos surrounding it. That's a good scene for us to use today in the midst of our own chaos. In many situations, I've talked to you in Bible study and in other places, and most of my friends feel the same way. There is such chaos in the world today. And now we're wondering about the economic situation in America, and we're being told one thing by one group and something else by others. And we're waiting for the experts to give us the definitive word, what's happening in America. It's important in the midst of this chaos to see Jesus choosing, choosing to enter and to confront and to stand up to all that is chaotic and unjust and painful in life and to speak clearly of a way through that chaos. It is true that passion is wrapped up in its very best form, in its truest definition, passion is wrapped up in God's love, God's desire for you and for me, and God's desire for all humankind. Hosanna literally means, the words that the people were shouting, Hosanna literally means save now. And for this story to mean anything to you and me, it must be true for us that God's love saves us now. It saves us from meaninglessness, which encroaches on everyone's life. And sometimes we see things in our lives or our loved ones have suffered things and we say, this is meaningless. I can't understand this at all. Is there a purpose to this? And most of all, is there a purpose to my life and yours? And God's love saves us from being lost in suffering and death you know those who have suffered something in life and turned bitter because of it. And they are hard and they cannot love because of the suffering or death has really defeated them. 